This video describes the conversion of a PVC sewer pipe into Rapid Nadion's radio-controlled USS Virginia submarine. Step 1. Salvaging Components Because we built our previous submarine, Baton Rouge, using the same methods we planned to use for Virginia, we wanted to salvage as many parts from that boat as possible. Unfortunately, as some longtime fans may remember, Baton Rouge experienced a flooding casualty and sank on a voyage in Peconic Bay in winter 2009. She stayed on the bottom for over a week in a fully flooded condition before some helpful recreational divers recovered her. As a result, her hull was ruined and almost all of her onboard machinery was destroyed. The only salvageable items were her rudders and her large mahogany nose cone. We decided to build these into Virginia. After much planning and calculation, construction began with the 4-inch diameter PVC pipe we selected to serve as the hull. As already mentioned, the sonar dome, or nose cone, was inherited from the older submarine. But as Baton Rouge's stern section was too badly damaged, a new one had to be fashioned out of walnut turned on a wood lathe. The stern section houses most of the submarine's vital control systems, such as push rods, rudder linkages, the propeller shaft stuffing tube, and seals, in a very tight space. Planning and building these systems presented a particular challenge. Next to be integrated was the 9.6 volt electric motor with a reduction belt drive, which turns the propeller shaft to give the submarine forward motion. Soon after came the steering servo, which controls both rudders to turn the submarine, and up forward another servo and linkage system to control the bow planes. Next, a long hull cut was made along the boat's spine to serve as an access hatch with more components then being test fitted within the hull. The walnut stern section was treated with a brushed on coat of polyester resin to prevent water intrusion. It was then mated to a flange, fashioned from the top half inch of an aluminum piston from an airplane engine, and secured to the hull with six screws and a generous amount of boat life sealant. With the stern section installed, we conducted a propulsion and steering system test to ensure all components within the hull were properly aligned. After some tweaks, the propeller was turning freely and the rudder and bow planes were moving on command. The propulsor shroud is a kind of nozzle that surrounds the propeller on this class of submarine. Actually, the real Virginia class has a ducted pump jet instead of a propeller, but we opted for the simpler six-bladed propeller on our boat. To make the nozzle, we laminated four layers of three-quarter ounce fiberglass cloth and resin around a makeshift form, which in this case was the top section of a lava lamp. A wax paper barrier between the lamp and resin-saturated cloth prevented their sticking together. Trimming both ends with scissors resulted in a nicely formed duct. We used the same technique to build the eight braces for the duct, then attached them to the hull with CA glue. We then installed the shroud itself, making sure there was equal propeller blade clearance on all sides of its interior. While we were able to reuse Baton Rouge's rudders, we still needed to make bow planes, stern planes, and Virginia's special anhedral stabilizers from scratch. We cut these from 3 16 inch thick plexiglass and sanded their leading and trailing edges to shape. Up forward, the bow section got the same treatment as the stern. An aircraft piston head segment was secured to the aft end of the sonar dome and then fixed to the hull with screws and sealant. The basswood sail, or in older terms, the conning tower, was secured to the hull by rubber adhesive. The joint between the sail and hull was reinforced with boat life. All control surfaces were test fitted as the Virginia neared completion. A few shots of black spray paint on the upper surface of the hull gave us a preview of her menacing appearance. After the upper deck's paint dried, we refined the electrical systems, which control steering and propulsion. We replaced the stock battery, motor, and speed control wire connectors with Dean's plugs, as we have used these on other boats and prefer them over all others. We applied a waterline using a pencil held across a wide candle jar on a level surface, 
then masked off the upper decks with a close approximation of E.B. Green tape. After a few layers of dark gray bottom paint, Virginia was looking even closer to deployment-ready status. After the paint dried, we applied some dry transfer decals from Woodland Scenics to give the boat her proper draft and escape trunk hatch markings. These were the same decals we used to detail the Baton Rouge on her initial build over a decade ago. They've held up well in storage. Once the stern planes, rudders, and anhedrals were affixed, it was time for Virginia's first bathtub float test. The float test helps determine whether the model is appropriately balanced and ballasted, and also, hopefully, shows if the hull has any leaks. Virginia's didn't, so we proceeded to test the propulsion system. This was our first time using a propulsor-like shroud on a submarine propeller, so we were surprised to see some interesting turbulence patterns, including vortexes. Our float test revealed that Virginia sat slightly bowed down in the water, so we modified our lead ballast slightly to fit under the motor further aft. With this final adjustment, the boat was made ready for her shakedown cruise. Virginia ran quite well on the surface, generating the trademark bow wave common to bullet-nosed submarines, and she looked great. But when it came time to submerge, the boat refused to dive. Notice the bow planes are in their full dive position, but Virginia has too much buoyancy for the planes to pull her under. We brought her ashore for a recharge and some adjustments. The stern planes were given a higher dive angle to keep the stern lower in the water, allowing the propeller to drive the submarine without ventilating as readily, and more ballast was added so that the boat would sit lower in the water. This process was repeated several times, until finally, Virginia disappeared beneath the waves. And then, thankfully, returned to the surface. More testing and overhauls are in store for Virginia in her post-shakedown availability period at the Rapidnadion W&M shipyards. To see what's in store next, subscribe to us and follow us elsewhere on the internet at these links. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more.